I'm about to go into the first ever Barnes Noble's concept store in East Chester, New York. It's weird for me because I worked here at Borders when it was open from like 2002 to like 2011. Worked here for a couple years, so it's gonna be weird going back in to see what it's like in there. Let's go check it out. So we, you guys got the um, the the ten minute warning, right? Yes, we got the ten minute warning. <laughs> What's the book you're gonna buy? So I'm buying Danielle Walker's Against All Grains, Celebrations. <laughs> We're out. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Still looking on the bright side. And what's in the book though? Nothing, right? So it's like, okay, there's not much hope in it. All we have is now. So what's in this one? Nothing again. Wow. What's this one called here? Be still. What's in this one? Can't move. I thought it was fantastic. It was one of the blessed if I can talk straight, best dining experiences I've ever had. I told the chef, Seamus, five stars, baby, five stars. The music is pretty good. They need to turn the volume up a lot more, but played very good eclectic mix, a lot of rhythm and blues, 60s, 70s stuff. They played The Cream. They played Bob Dylan. They played The Animals. They played Leonard Skinner. They played Led Zeppelin. I was grooving to the music. Well, that was uh, really interesting. Uh, man, that was weird to see the store that I used to work at. Um, a lot of nostalgia came back, a lot of memories. Uh, it looks really nice though, the store. I think they did a great job with it. The thing about Borders that everyone loved in this town was that you could go there to just hang out and drink coffee and sit. It's funny, I saw a lot of people with wine glasses just walking around the store. Like, they allow people to walk in with the book section. So, like, I wonder how much spilled wine is going to be on the books. Borders was a hugely popular spot in this town, and uh, it's nice to see another bookstore back. I think it's the right place for it. So what happened exactly? I was using the mandolin to slice zucchini for the antipasto for Thanksgiving, <laughs> and I was getting excited because it was going so well, and the slice, it was actually working for once, and then... I ended up slicing the pinky. Tip of my finger off right here. But it's all covered, right? It's all covered now. Um, so it's bleeding a are lot. are you gonna, it was I a lot had, of blood? Yeah, a lot of blood. I had to keep my arm up like for a long time. But she said, it's, you know, it's gonna heal, regenerate. So. It's gonna regenerate? Yeah, it'll regenerate. How, how much is missing of the pinky? Like, like, I don't know how to say it. Like, you know, that much. It's all flesh, it's but it's flesh. like. How bad did it hurt? It hurt, oh, it hurt. Did you just scream out? Yeah, I was like really upset, and I was like so mad. How much blood gushed out? It wasn't like gushing. I, well, it was bleeding. It was, it was. You put a lot of pressure on it, and it kept going through la the layers of gauze that I had on it on the way to the hospital to keep putting oh something God. on it. I have a, an audition on Monday with Bak Bakers versus Fakers, the Food Network show. We're at the bake in front of the producers for like twenty minutes, so they can see how I, how I bake and everything. So I'm just worried that I won't be able to do the best I can, but. I think I'll be fine, and they'll, they'll see that I'm still trying to do it, even with, with my finger bandage, and that's nothing new for people like that. They're used to, like, cooks and bake bakers, like, cutting off, cutting and slicing their fingers, so 